in three, two. Hey, Katie Girls, it's Sunday, August 15th, 2021, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All-Stars Season 6, Episode Number 9. And for those of you that haven't been with us before, hi, welcome Wait. to the little show. <laughs> my name's Gary, with me is my ever-fabulous, perhaps mathematically challenged co-host. Hello everyone, it's Damon, welcome. It was more like... How do I make it right for the screen? Is it <laughs> five and then four, or or then our desk? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, that, that looks right. Like you know, five and then four. Boom. Okay. Anyway, hi. Well, I'm glad you were able to get that figured out. And uh, I got mm -hmm. a question for you, Damon. Would you like some tots? I love tots. I actually really, really do. Like if you, if you, if if you give me potato in top form, I am happy for it. I will eat it up. So, let's see how hungry you are after we get done talking about this episode, I mean, shall we? True. <laughs> With that being said, you ready to get into the first segment? Let's let's do it. All right, so. Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. All right, so it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Let's uh, discuss our overall thoughts on drag tots. Um, so basically, uh, the queens had to create characters that would go into this animated feature, which apparently is coming around as with season two three years after it premiered on WoW Presents Plus. So, yeah, it's a little confusing as to, like, what the real story is. It's, like, mm -hmm. why it's being done and how it's being done. Um, but, yeah. So, let, why don't we just go ahead and discuss the episode overall, then we'll get into some more specifics. Sure thing. So, Damon, what were your thoughts about this episode? <laughs> <laughs> So I wrote down, and I kind of still feel this way, is this worthy of top five? Mm. Um, is it a bit of a read? Is it a little shady? Yes, I will own that. But that's that's me. Um, but my, my thought is, this is a design lip sync-ish kind of thing. Where it's not really a lip sync thing. It's more of a narration because they don't really have to lip sync to what they're doing. It's a you write something down, which more than likely they've given you a like mad lib script thing, mm. um, and maybe you give your little thoughts and things there, and then you read it. Obviously, they record it, which they never show. So, um, and then um, you have to make something, right? A thing, one thing, one outfit, maybe props. Because some people made props, but I don't recall that being mentioned. The idea was to make something that fits into this children's show. Mm. So, like, it. I'm trying to think back and I'm trying to remember, and I'll, I'll, I'll look it up here in a minute, but like, was like there was the whole, you know, cousin, you know, barbecue thing that they did last all-stars but in that one i feel like they had to make like two or three looks and it was i think it was, i think we were higher up but then they had to make the looks out of in, in, you know unconventional unconventional materials because it was all like you know back our barbecue stuff like that's how we got alexis mateo with the pool um uh, as the like you know hoop skirt for her dress those kind of things. So mm -hmm. I just I'm 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 uncertain. I don't think this was a great this late in the game concept to show us more of the queens. Um, creative, kind 
kind of, yeah. Um, I think some people just were themselves. Um, and then other than that, like, that's really all it was. And the fact that, I mean, yes, we had a mini challenge, which thank God we did. But other than that, like, there wasn't a whole lot here. Mm. I felt like this would this could have been a much earlier episode and could have done something different with the top five. Okay. But that's my opinion. All right. What about you? Um, I, I mean, I think that's pretty fair, David. Like, I, I don't disagree with anything you said. I mean, I, what I said was an original challenge, question mark. Um <laughs> It's original, like we've never done this specifically before, but each of the queens have to create an alternative personality and a narration, and they present Mm -hmm. a look on the runway. So to me, it was kind of a lot like the commercial challenge in Mm -hmm. past like seasons, only the commercial, instead of it being a product, it's you in an Mm -hmm. alternate form. So, you know, I mean, like, they, they get to be little, you know, cartoon character things. They could also be superheroes. They could be, you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind yeah. of one of those things where I was like, well, okay, like, it's a little different, you know? And I would have been more impressed if they had to do voiceover work. Like, to, mm-hmm. like, like not only I, for some reason, was thinking, like, that they were going to create this character. And then there was going to be some s- small animation and they yeah. were going to do voiceover work of it, and they were going to also present their look on the runway. So I thought that on the runway you were going to get two versions, like you were going to get the le- wee, like little, like drag animated tot, and then you were going to mm-hmm. get the real life version side by side. You know what I mean? Like they would have seen, yeah. you know, over top the video what they looked like. like. So you're acting like you're talking to your animated yeah. personification, but it, they're not really there in real. You know, it gets done in post. Yeah are done something where because you know i don't i don't know i again we i I don't have wow presents plus so i haven't seen this show right but it seemed pretty clear that there were like five or six queen like tots like we talked about this there was either four or five no there were five tots and then there was the unicorn which was was by rupaul correct so i was i was surprised there wasn't like you pick one of the tots and you get to be like their compliment or something along those lines just something to add a little more challenge like if if you're building your own fucking character like cool you can do whatever you want that kind of leaves a lot of freedom right and that's nice but is it really that challenging you're just making another character well i think we're gonna get into that i mean true (laughs) (laughs) because <laughs> i'm not quite sure if i feel that they all rose to the challenge mm. but um that being said why don't we uh, talk a little bit about uh what took place in this episode before we get into the the runway portion um yeah so for the challenge i this mini challenge thing honestly was probably one of my favorites of uh-huh. all time just because i really liked the silliness of it um and I think it was right for the right size. Like, mm-hmm. I might like it a little more if it was done for, say, seven. Mm. Yeah. Like, like I like the odd number. I like how there was two people in the front row and three people in the next row back. So you could have staggered, you know, desk arrangement and it'd be easier for camera lines and eye line, like, to see people. Um, so I think if, like, they did it again and they got it to, like, seven – contestants that would be okay because then you could do three and four and i think that would still kind of work um but i really liked the whimsicalness of them like just Mm -hmm. stating names uh you know as they were doing stuff so this whole superlatives thing was that they had to write on these eraser boards you know what their thoughts were on who fit the category um and I liked it. I thought it was kind of fun. I will say, though, that it was unfortunately shady that they turned the direction they did with the very last question. It was quite the gotcha moment when mm-hmm. Rue says, and now for the most difficult question. And then she drops the bomb. And I was like, dang, they are not messing around. Mm-hmm. Who needs to go home? For, like, who needs? Who is going home next? Like, bitch, like, 
Okay. So right. you're trying to like get them to predict the 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 outcome of whatever challenge they're throwing at them, which they don't really know. Nor or um um are, do we you know everyone's kind I mean I don't want to actually I will say it except for one spoiler alert everyone is somewhat on an even keel if you think of like track correct. record correct our wins and losses and, and such and such and, and therefore there are officially two people well actually now two people now I think about it that might be a little bit in danger mm. And they got they got voted for, except for one. No, yeah. Well, one was unanimous. Yeah, mm. and that's who who left. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So, you know, just and just, I, just saying. Mm hmm. Um, because that's a whole and thing. Uh huh. Hmm. Yes, but yeah, yeah. So I, I thought the I thought the superlative like you know kind of little thing was was cute uh, that they ended up doing that. And like we were saying, so you know you have these six characters, five queens, four good, one evil, and then like kind of like their conscience guidance. Um, Charlie of Charlie's Angels, if you will, you know this, this mm-hmm, other mm-hmm. Uh, individual, which is the corny, the unicorn, which is played uh, voiced by RuPaul. So we have, you know, Bianca Del Rio, Latrice Royale, Adora Delano, Detox, and Valentina as like the original characters and voices. And as you and I had previously discussed, we were trying to figure out like if these representations were supposed to be a one-to-one because there are five queens and they had to pick mm-hmm. one, but then we were all confused because there was a sixth one and we were like, wait, does that mean that we're getting another queen back? And then like, you know, that after realizing and putting it all together, it's like, oh, never mind. Like the sixth representation on the end is Corny the Unicorn. That's RuPaul. And so technically these easels of this had nothing to do with who they were Anything. going to be. It was Sorry. more, well, no, it was, it was more contextual for people who don't know anything about drag tots. And it was a bit of a misdirect in the preview of this episode. What? I don't know a damn thing about drag tots. <laughs> <laughs> Other than what we just like literally right. found out what last week <laughs> when I looked it up and like, oh, there's a preview. There's a there's a little, you know, preview of what the show is. That was nice. Yeah, so that was that was pretty much all we had to go off of. So I, I felt if you really didn't know anything about it, then you had no idea what was going on mm-hmm. when it came to this. So, um, but that being said, I thought that that was you know kind of kind of fun. They did this little thing, and um, yeah, you know, we we got to see that uh, portion of stuff. So, uh, yeah. but listen, should we talk about the the characters and their presentations on the runway? Sure, let's do that. Okay. Oh, I didn't. All right, kitty girl. So it's time to cruise the runway. Category is drag tot characters. I guess. I, so yeah. that's, I mean, did we? Was it ever announced? No, they didn't give the. They did because it wasn't. There wasn't an actual runway. Like that sort of the thing, like the whole runway or the whole point of the walking and strutting the runway was them showing off their characters behind their um, or under their uh, narration. Right. So that being said, David, uh, why don't we discuss our thoughts overall first and then we'll get into our serve swerve nerve review. <sighs> So, uh, I put, mm, meh, and I literally just put that like two seconds ago. That's why I'm laughing. Because Because I'm playing the lead in music and I realized you realized that you forgot to write something. Yep. So didn't. And I realized, I kind of hate to say it, I kind of realized why. Okay. I wasn't, there wasn't anything that wowed me. Okay. Nothing wowed me. 
nothing caught me like, oh, that was that was great. Like that's really fun. Nothing seemed different or special or fun. Um, and again, maybe it's me that I don't have the premise of the show to kind of understand what's going on. And I don't know if the queens have the premise of the show. I don't know if they've seen it. Uh, uh, you know, and and so like in my mind when I when you when you go, oh, you're making a character that's supposed to be a live action character. I think they said, I think Bruce said live action. So I didn't think they were going to be turned into like mini me's in a- animation. But when you say you're putting it alongside this show that I know nothing about and I've never seen right. and I don't understand, right. I don't know what to look for. Mm-hmm. Like they had these, like their 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 purse, their oh, I so flusters like words. Um, their performance thing was like they're gonna have a magical power, or they had magical powers, and they were just supposed to be characters that they created, and you had to build a look based on that. And I was like, okay, okay it makes sense in theory, but then you get what I saw, and I was like, mm. okay, right. um. So they they just made drag outfits, right? And that was that was a, that was the other big piece of this challenge is that they had to create their runway look from scratch. Yeah. So they couldn't really like. This was a challenge that I think would have worked better if they had some preparation. Like Maybe. if they had been told before arrival. That they had mm-hmm. to create a hero or villain character and have it mm-hmm. runway presentable. So they could have, like, you know, contracted a designer to make something. And then upon arrival, they find out the extra twist is you have to create an entire personality off of what you brought. Mm-hmm. And you have to, like, and, and you know what I mean? And then they yeah. need a character name and superpowers and you know mm-hmm. they could have they could have deviated a little bit and gone a different direction like, but my my main issue was like the superpowers part mm-hmm. like like i give like proper poise and i can make you walk the runway fiercely and i can um um i don't even know like i have these earrings that see that that helps blt or what the fuck ever carly said <laughs> it just it was just like what like again, and this again, this is part of my issue. I don't know what all was presented. Like, was your power supposed to be like something positive and peppy, and meant to be like good for like a queen, you know, to learn, quote mm. unquote? Is that was that the premise? Right. Okay. Cool. Didn't say it, so I don't know what the, what, what 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 these powers are meant to like. Where like why did no one said anything about like flying or lasers or you know, telekinesis or something like, you know, anything along those lines. And yes, that's the nerd in me coming out, but that's kind of like my thought. Like, like no one mentioned anything <laughs> about like actual, like powers, you know? I know. I, I caught that and I'm glad you owned it. Cause I was like, well, there's the geekdom coming out. Cause you're like, <laughs> honey child. Like I've read a lot of comic books and none of these Queens, like none of these characters are giving me like, like you know, like, I mean the, Eureka's noxious gas thing is kind of a thing that, but that, that she picked that because of the stuff that happened in the superlatives thing. Right. Like, like again, and, and I'm, I'm ooh, we're going to talk about it, but I'm just going to say this, like, um, I'm going to say it now, Eureka, we've had a real opportunity to do something fun and green and like, na- like noxious. And you're kind of going this evil villain route. Why did you pick this blue, like cheetah print? I don't know. Might have been one of the few fabrics there was enough yardage to make the Maybe. style of outfit that she wanted. I don't know. I don't know. Because even I kind of thought, like, if Noxious Gas, if, like, farting was going to be, like, her, her, her villain power, I'm like, baby, yeah. then why did you not, of all the times, make chaps? Or cut out the back end somehow? You know what I yeah. mean? Or make mm-hmm. a flap that you could yeah. raise? Like, you know, yeah. anyways, I don't know. Yeah. Know you had all this, I mean, yeah, anyway. Just, just, there were so many missed opportunities and missed balls that just were, were just dropped. And that's why I said, meh. Okay. okay. 
Gary. <laughs> well, uh, in contrast to you watching the episode, I thought about it and I said there was one great and then four okay. Like, I didn't hate anybody's thing. Um, mm-hmm. I actually thought one was the worst. And we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and like, I just, uh, yeah, like I, I was in a whole mm-hmm. other thing about this. I kind of, I, I don't know. I, I went in a different direction mentally, not only from you, but also from the judges, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about that. Let's do it. So first up, uh, I want to give shout out to Latrice and Bianca for doing some VO work because their little drag characters got to be animated onto uh, the show as extra judges, quote unquote, which was more peanut who gallery was... type commentation on the yeah. side. Who, who who made those eyes for Latrice? Good God. Oh, that's, her, like... that's her regular eyes <laughs> as a drag dot. <laughs> <laughs> those are massive. <laughs> well, that's part of the whole charm of the big tots. They big, big eyes. They're you know, big ass eyes with a little lip, like, mwah, like yeah. <laughs> look at that little lip. Anyway, yeah. It's so cute. no, I thought that that was really fun because I appreciated that they did some VO stuff to mm-hmm. pep up a little bit of like the thoughts about the runway characters that were being presented, and all of this got done obviously after the episode was recorded. So most yeah. likely, Latrice and Bianca were asked to just you know record some quick clips. A couple mm-hmm. different versions, and then they like you know shoved all that in for editing. So, first up, we have Miss Trinity K. Bonet. Um, and I'm trying to remember is it Felicia the Fierce Feline? It's, it's Fierce Felicia the Feline. Okay, <laughs> yeah, right. Fur Lisa. Yeah, so Trinity K. Bonet is giving us uh, Cats the musical, the movie, the live show. <laughs> girl, girl. <laughs> all right i'll go first swerve go for it swerve oh why i don't like it i don't like the cut of it it looks weird like i'm looking at this stuff on the image like i'm like what what is what is happening here on the midriff there are these weird like white kind of triangular sort of things that I think are part of the mm-hmm. actual bodysuit pattern, but then we put like the pink. Uh, anyways, I just it, it so, looks homemade, which it is. And I know that. But I was just like, girl, the best part about you is your mug. Like that's that's <laughs> that's not good necessarily in this case. But anyways. Uh, um, I take it you so, feel differently. <laughs> well kind of. Um um, I, I give this a serve, but it's again a soft serve because I felt very mad about it. The idea behind, I, I assume, the idea behind this like, like cuts and stuff is to be like a striped cat, like a you know like a tabby or whatever, where there's like the the stripe the stripe that go into the white bottom of you know a cat. Is it perfect? No. Could it have been perfect? Maybe if she'd had more time. But I want to clock those ears. I don't know why they are so big. And that is part of the problem. Since they are so big, they no longer look like cat ears. They are not cat ears. They are far too big. They look like rabbit. Our fox are something like with the big ears that, you know, mm. like it just doesn't work. And that has been my, that was kind of my issue. Um, and then I watched Bussy Queen and this morning, and one of the things Bussy pointed out that I didn't realize until I, like, clo- like mentally clocked it, like, um, she didn't open her mouth, like not, not once. Oh, so okay. she was trying to make like obviously kind of do the the, the cat mouth thing mm-hmm. with her makeup, which is cute. I love the makeup, the makeup, the thing that saved it, but like, she didn't open her mouth. Because I guess she had wanted to not have the illusion broken, but yeah, yeah, it's just very awkward. And I, I think the sleeves are too long. On like we're looking at this picture, I think the sleeves are too long. Um, because what they should, if she was going that route, she could have 
just made it go all the way to the to the wrist or to the to the hand, and had a cutout where you can put the thumb and you know where do it like that, mm-hmm. and then you can do like the cat part. Instead, she's cut it at the wrist, and then put again random odd bullshit and put like a ring or something to like wear as like the fur on her hand. <sighs> yeah. And and I, I, I bet she was hot AF in this outfit. Like and not like woo hot fierce. No, I mean like hot. <laughs> like <laughs> like melting. <laughs> like melting. Yeah. Cause I'm sure that is not like high grade like fur, you know, what have you. Right. It's probably lots of breathability yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Next mm. up, Miss Ginger Minge as Tarabell, which was an acronym. And honestly, I thought that was cute that she had a had a funny, silly drag name that actually mm-hmm. was a whole series of things, and she just goes by Tarabell. Yeah, <laughs> which which was ironic and, and amusing because Ginger was really good creatively and she said that she that she got the what is it the parasol of power poise poise, poise. from her mother Horabelle mm-hmm. <laughs> that still makes me laugh and I was like that's just so stupid but silly like I thought it was funny um yeah so I'll let you go I'll let you go first because I went first last time I don't want to yeah, so I give this again another soft serve. Again, I I felt very mad about a lot of this, and the main reason was like, like this looks like something anyone could wear. Okay. Like yes, it's very southern, and I get that idea, but like at the end of the day, this looks like something Ginger would wear to a gig. This doesn't look like a character. This looks like something you could wear. I wanted a different color hair. I wanted something cartoonish about this. It would have been fun if the like the little bit of purple that we get at the bottom had gone all the way up to the belt to kind of give it like that, um, not bodice. What are those bottom things that women used to do? Well, right. like the petticoat kind of feel. Yeah, yeah, petticoat kind of feel. I think is what I'm going for. It just it just feels so simple. It feels really simple, and um, um, I just wanted—I I wanted more. Like, if she had taken the ruffle that is on her parasol and put a ruffle at the bottom of the skirt, you know, to give it more, like just give it something cartoony, like mm-hmm. ruffle on the on, ruffles up the you know the collar of this dress, ruffles on the bottom to just amp up the fact that this is not while this is a live action character it's still a character okay yeah that's fair sorry i'm i am super critical tonight it's all right (laughs) that's what we're here for um i give it a serve this was the one that i thought was great out of the five like Mm -hmm. this is the one where i was like i think you hit it right on the head Uh it was exactly what was asked for i can see this being a full-fledged character and like it looks drag yet it looks like kind of like Mm -hmm. not fully like in an animation zone but it like really like fit well together like the pink is obviously the highlight color and you know as an accent we've got a flower in the hair a flower on the belt flowers on the shoes like like i just thought the whole thing was well cohesively put together and i was super impressed when she walked out i was like whoa okay we put that together yeah that doesn't mean it's without criticism yeah, I do like again. I like the design and I like the cut and I like the 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 like most things about it. I just feel like there could have been more to it, and I and I know that there's like they has only so much time, yada yada yada. But right. I the big thing for me would have been like give me a different color hair, hmm. like just 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 something to kind of make it a little bit cartoonish. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Next up, Raja O'Hara. And I already forgot what her queen's day was, which is really sad. I see you, queen. Okay, that's right, because she had a different one. Uh-huh. Queen <laughs> see me. See me. <laughs> right, and RuPaul made fun of that and could not stop 
like practically pissing herself because she kept hearing the word semen. And mm -hmm. that was just like cracking her up. So Raja ended up changing the name of the queen and came out with this. So, Kay, do you want to go first or should I go first? Um, I, I mean, I could go first. It's really simple. I think it's a swerve. Mm -hmm. I don't care for it. I, mm. the only thing I like there, are, no, there are two things I like. Yeah. I was about to say three, but I'm not going to give her the third. I'll give her two. <laughs> I like the hair and I like the mug. Like I like the, I like the paint job that she did. I thought it was really mm -hmm. well done and I love the hair. It, it is, that's, that's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> shit um <laughs> so um i'm uh i give this a swerve as well um why are you struggling uh, what is what is going this on this is a bodysuit with a skirt around it and a, a loose skirt at that that seems to be held together in the back by like some like the like some like bungee or something that's holding it all together in the back, but this is essentially a bodysuit. Um, and while I like the colors and you pick some really great fabrics, um, it it blurs too much for me. Mm. And especially in this picture, it looks like she's blurring into the background because of the the you know curtain behind her. Mm. And and I'm gonna clock. You you on your eyes because I, I again i think bussy queen mentioned this specifically but i feel the same i felt the same way when i watched it um this looks like an afterthought mm. and why didn't you do like if you're gonna do it do it i in the middle of the i in the middle of the chest some eyes like uh, you had some like on one of your legs but you didn't have it on the other. Nothing in the eyes in the back of your head. Like you could have like thrown like some googly eyes like on a thing and thrown it in the wig. Just something like again, take it, take it up a notch. I I guess this was cute having them in the palms, pans labyrinth, all that bullshit, yada yada yada. We've seen it like twenty thousand times. Uh, I just I would have liked more. I loved the glasses. I thought that was kind of cute with all the little eyes on the glasses, but. You take them off, and and then you're left with with like a, a prop that's gone. Yeah, you could have had an eye like in the middle. You could have had eye like just instead of just throwing them down one leg, like be a little bit more strategic on where you're placing them. Could have had them all around the collar of this dress. Could have had like again eye in the middle. Could have had eyes on like the quote unquote nipples of this dress thing. Like that would have been funny. And added just a little bit of you know humor to this moment, um, and uh, it just uh, like I love like I agree with you. The mug is nice. I really do like that. I think that was really fun. And we now know Roger's color is purple. Yay! I bet Jan is sitting turned in her grave. No, she's not. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I think it's hilarious that. We were, they were, they were talking about Jane and her purple and kind of clocking her for it. And they were praising Roger for her purple. Was it because she was more, more subtle about it? I don't, I don't know. Mm. Who knows? Maybe. But yeah, this was just. I, okay. I'm going to be controversial yet brave. And I'm going to say this. I thought Ginger was going to win. Now, I know I clocked her outfit, but like. Of the like the choices she made, the 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 character she made, it was funny. It was it was, you know, it 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 just it. I loved it. Like right. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah, I agree. I thought Ginger was going to win it, and I clocked that it was hers to lose. Mm hmm. And then she lost. Mm hmm. And I was confused. Mm hmm. So. <laughs> That said, yeah. moving on, uh, Eureka presented as Alexandria McQueen. Alexandra. Yeah, Alexandria McQueen, yeah. Right. right. Which mm -hmm. is a spoof 
on Alexander McQueen, who was a designer, I mm-hmm. believe, which yeah. confuses me greatly because I was like, yeah. why are we, why are we doing that? But anyways, mm-hmm. this was nerve. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. Like, which way are you going with this? <laughs> I don't like it. It. Okay. I, I... Should have chose a different fabric. Should have chose a different f- fabric. Like, that's point blank number one. You had an opportunity. You're going to do like an evil queen. You're going to do an evil villain kind of thing. Why did you go with blue? Blue has always been, naturally been. I'm talking about comics, fantasy, everything. Like, blue has always been like a good color. It's very rare that you have a villain that is blue. Like, it's just, just, just nature of things. In rant on Nerd Kurt, on, on Geek Them. I'm just going to put that there. <laughs> just like, so. Uh, again, I don't know. Maybe there was something wrong. Maybe you didn't have enough fabric. I, I get it. I understand. There's, there's, it, it's a thing. But remembering, recalling what I saw in the workroom, they were pulling out reams of fabric, mm-hmm. like giant fucking reams of fabric. Mm-hmm. So I just don't think I don't think that's a good enough excuse that there wasn't fabric that with the fabric thing. Well, Granted, you made your whole thing out of one out out of one fabric so or maybe two because i think you have an under of like a of a black but anyway so yeah there's that yeah i was greatly confused because i thought she was sewing the exact same black fabric that kylie was in the workroom and then this is what got presented on the runway so i don't know what happened yeah and then while i like this design and it does evoke kind of that like wicked queen kind of thing um, it was stifling for you. You could barely move in it. Um, you wanted this long ass train, but we never really saw it because you could move yeah. a lot. Yeah, you kind of stayed in one spot. So what's weird to me, the more I think about it, honestly, Damon, is I think that this outfit would have worked better if she had done another fabric, like if she had designed it and created a better silhouette by doing black paneling. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That could have like given her like the the Black Widow spider kind of like mm-hmm. center, exactly. you know, black panels down the sides that like widened, but made her like, you know, waist look yeah. slimmer. And she could have mm-hmm. used more of that into the train fabric and adapted mm-hmm. it into the cowl. Like, I mean, there, there was just a bunch of things like, like the more I keep looking at this image that I have of her, of like, I did not see Game of Thrones, but I just realized that the cowl, like, and, and the swoop or whatever, this reminds me of the woman that is the gift that says shame. Shame. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And I know it's not the same thing. I know she's wearing more like a nun thing, but anyway, it just, it just, yeah. It, I, I, again, I just wanted, like, and then you named your character Alexandria McQueen, which has nothing at all to do with anything that your character was or did. Yeah. It was just a name. Yeah. So was it just meant to be a funny pun on the Alexander McQueen thing? Yeah. Is this an Alexander McQueen design? I don't know. I can't tell you. Yeah. Um, was that what you were going for? If so, that was kind of a stretch. Just like the fabric. Just like the fact. So Sorry, yeah, girl. I just I, I, I did I just didn't like it. And yeah. it the the if it again, I think if it had been a different fabric or if you had made different choices, maybe done a couple of different colors, gone a little bit more quote unquote evil queen ish in things and given you some ability to move around, mm-hmm. um maybe it would have been better. Yeah. I don't know. It, I mean it was definitely a swerve for me. I, I did not I was like, nope. That's not that's not gonna win. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we have Miss Kylie Sonique Love, who was presenting a good witch, but like it was getting confusing to me because Rue like referenced I think her as a bad witch or something, 
Mm-hmm. And then, like, even Kylie made reference, I think, in Twitter about how, like, things weren't clearly understood. That even though she's wearing all black, and but she's a good witch. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was just mm-hmm. this weird thing. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what the whole, like, thing was meant to be. But then again, yeah. Okay. I'm honestly mixed on this. So, um, I give this a swerve. Okay. Um, I thought it was too simple. While there are, like, fun little elements there, like, I like the fact that the the broom kind of stands is standing up on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, this was really, really basic. Mm-hmm. Like, really basic. And I just was expecting, at this point of the competition, I was expecting something more. While I appreciate the whole, like, the the bell of this dress and it kind of looks like maybe she's like floating. She didn't do enough to make it seem that way. Mm-hmm. You know, if she had kind of lilted and floated around like she was floating on the on the runway, I would have gotten that. I would have been like, oh, she did that intentionally to kind of look like she's never touching the ground. That's kind of fun and cute. Right. Um, um, I, I I like some of it. I like like the bow in the back and I love the little witch hat. I would have loved a longer hair um, and maybe a different color. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to say this again. If you're going to do like a different color eye for like the heterochromia kind of situation, there kind of needs to be a reason for it. I would have liked like a lightning bolt or, or something on your in your makeup to kind of I hate to, to say it, but like de prettify you mm. in a sense. You know, if you're gonna cause to me, like you you give us this like white eye and then your I guess your regular color eye, your dark like your regular eye, a darker eye. And it looks good in contrast, but unfortunately it gets lost when you wear all of this fucking black. So I needed something else to kind of be like, oh, that's why that's there. Yeah. You know, like if your eye had been the same color as the eye on the book that you're carrying and you held it there as like a thing, like, okay, that makes sense. That's kind of funny or not funny. That's kind of like, you know, magical and mystical and what have you. Um, um, Like, honestly, right now she looks like a black traffic cone. Okay. So yeah, there we go. I um I thought it was a really really soft serve. Mm-hmm. Like like barely a serve. Mm. But I thought it looked okay. I kind of questioned why the end result was the way it was but we did get a little bit of a clue that she was having problems with sewing and the like the machine and the fabric wasn't working for her and this is what Mm -hmm. she ended up with because she made reference in the workroom on the day of like the runway that she needed to finish her tube top or something like and i was like i thought she said tube top dress so i was expecting something totally different and then she came out with this and i was like okay i don't understand what i'm looking at but Mm -hmm. um and then I did clock in the workroom, I think when the judges were deliberating or something, or they were talking, I did clock that the seam on Kylie's left sleeve cap looked homemade. Mm-hmm. So I think she definitely made the top, even though the top fabric doesn't look like it matches the skirt fabric, which is what also confused me mm-hmm. on the runway. So like... It was it was so I'm so mixed about this Damon because I'm like this really feels like a like a regular season challenge result mm-hmm. like not an yeah. all stars and yet at the same time I'm like well you know not everyone's yeah so that's kinda... FYI because I, I I had to look it up so all stars five when they did the Rue barbecue situation it was a um, it was the top five so I was little I thought oh that seems weird but they had to do the two outfits. Um, they had the, um, 
the fake country cousin of RuPaul or something along those lines connected to her. And they knew that they assembled the second outfit uh, by hand using objects they found, like could be found in the garden or backyard kind of thing. Okay. So, um, and then there was the recording of the voiceover narrative to be played during a runway. So in that, t- so similar to that was this kind of um, assignment. Right. This was very similar to that, with the exception of they didn't have unconventional materials. They used fabric that was kind of there, um, so they didn't have to worry about that. Um, but they did have to do the narration, and they did have to do, um, like make make something from scratch. Right. And um, but in the last season, the All Stars Five season, they had a nut. They had to do another character. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway. So, yeah. So, that's that was the runway. You can tell I'm super excited about it. Ooh. Well, you know. Uh, before we move on to uh, Snaps and Eye Rolls in our last segment, I want to talk about how the show resulted. Mm-hmm. So, lo and behold, um, Raja wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I was honestly shocked. I was as well. I know she got some good critiques, but really, honestly, I feel uh, again, I feel like Ginger got better critiques. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was not prepared for that. Um, I found it interesting that if you weren't the winner of the week, you were in the bottom. Well, that, that was what happened. Again, I, comparing that's what happened in All Stars Five, the same similar episode. Right. It was top five. If you weren't in the top, you were in the bottom. Right. So I was like, oh, so now all four of them could possibly like leave, which did add an interesting dramatic element, because in theory, you now have a key moment in which you could send home your biggest competition, and then see how that plays itself out. Uh, that being said, so Raja um, is kind of caught in an awkward spot because she needs to prepare to lip sync for her legacy mm-hmm. and yet, like, change, question mark? Um, you know, like, be ready to, you know, present and perform. And, you know, mm-hmm. so she she changed some things up but left some things the same as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which made it very confusing. Look yeah, at. she was her her being so okay. I'm gonna clock it. Fuck it. I don't I don't care. I give I give no fucks anymore. Um, so she kept her purple face because mm-hmm. I don't think she had time to do a whole lot of face. Fair, fair. But she decided to wear like basically a leotard, mm-hmm. and then she grabbed a this long silver purple wig mm-hmm. kind of going, and you could tell. From where she removed the other wig and put this one on from the lace, because you can see a lot of her, like her natural skin color coming mm. through. And I was just like, oh, mama. Oh. And then to kind of like add to kind of keep the purple theme going, she grabbed the gloves from the outfit that she was wearing as I see you, which again didn't make any kind of sense. And then she's like, oh, I'm just, just for sake, I'm just gonna throw on the glasses. Because there was a reason for those. I know, girl. It's it's a hodgepodge hot mess for a look. I mean, yeah. if you had just if you had had like a purple like those shoes, if you had done like a purple shoe, hell, you could have just put on your Roger O'Hara boots again. There's a part of me that feels she should have changed. She could have just stayed in the actual outfit as crazy yeah. as it was. Yeah, unless she was concerned about the construction. Maybe. Mm. So, lo and behold, we find out that the lip sync assassin is Miss Cameron Michaels. Finally. The- Thank Ooh. the Lord. Have- <laughs> what? Fuck it. I'm, again, I'm calling shit out. Like, finally an actual lip sync assassin. Okay. Like... It's interesting that you someone say someone who way. has, well, four in a row, sent some bitches home. Right. The 
problem is I had a certain expectation out of this lip sync performance. Oh, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I just was happy to see an actual, like, assassin. Someone who I would consider a quote-unquote lip sync assassin. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah. Yeah, mm. that's fair. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I just... I um, I wasn't quite sure how how we got to what we did out of this performance. It confused me somewhat. Mm. And, you know, so, but I was happy <sighs> to see her and I was confused because I'm not sure how tall Raja is, but the two of them side by side didn't look very tall. Like mm. Cameron looks petite and short in this outfit with these boots. Like I was very confused. Cause I was like, wait a minute. I thought Cameron was like six plus. Like, and she doesn't look mm. that way. So I was, I don't know, maybe because she mm. just had a lot on. And, yeah. So, uh, that being said, then, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we get them to, to lip sync against each other. So. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, where's your garbage? Where's the, where's, the, where's the garbage quote? Oh. <laughs> Mama, this is garbage. <laughs> so, um, this felt like I was sitting, like I told you, I was like, I'm finally a lipstick assassin. I was really excited. I love Cameron. Um, she is always on point. She always is ready to perform. Like, I love watching her perform. She knows the word. She, she performs the fuck out of it. She's gymnast, you know, all those things. I was looking forward to this to this um, lip sync, mm -hmm. and we know that Raj is not a pushover either. She can dance, she can learn choreo, she's good with performance, etc. She knows how to you know emote a song. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a neck and neck like like you know tongue you know not tongue like nail biter. Right. Instead. Um, this felt so lackluster. This felt so like restrained mm -hmm. and 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 just just like, well, just felt shitty. Like considering who these people are and the performances I've seen them do on this show in the past, mm -hmm. I expected a lot more than what I got. Fair. I didn't feel that this was worth it. It just felt very odd. Like, and again, like my other thing was like, so it started for me, and I'm going to put it out there, when Cameron removed the train of her outfit and she right. didn't, she didn't like toss it to the, to the, you know, in front of the stage, you know, like, you know, off the stage, or toss it aside, or toss it to the back. She just kind of laid it, like, over to the side, like, where she was standing. Like, I don't, again, maybe this outfit was expensive, and you just didn't want to get it fucked up. I don't know. But, like, it felt like you were more concerned about the outfit, this train, than you were about, like, performing the song. And well, yeah, she, did, left... she she did this thing where she was on this side of the stage of this picture that we're looking at, and she was removing it, and she did like a couple like spins, mm -hmm. like holding it like it was a cape, like she was a matador with a bowl. Mm -hmm. It was so different, mm -hmm. and honestly, I was very confused by it because I didn't understand what Agreed. was happening. Yep. And then she did; she just kind of <laughs> like yeah. just tossed it. Like and let it flutter over off to the side on the stage. Like and then and Raja it, comes walking over at one point and I was like, Oh god, if Raja walks on it, like that's the end of it. And then slips and falls, like something like that or whatever. Right. But no, they just kind of avoided that area and then they avoided that area for the rest of the performance. Right, because it was there. And I was just like, What what's what's going on? Yeah. Why are we why do we what are we doing? Yeah. And then like then it was gone. So who knows where it went? Like I guess I'm assuming the staff pulled it when, before they you know did the, you know reveal of the lipsticks and stuff. Yeah. 
but like <laughs> it just it just it 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 crippled the side of the stage in a way. Yeah. And and then the just the rest of the performance was just so just bleh. it just felt so meh and so like right. Yeah, just yeah. There's and there's some stuff like so this is the only shot I really have of the of them performing because I didn't think it was very good and it was so hard to like get a mm-hmm. get a snapshot of the two of them together and it's ironic that Cameron's gesturing to Raja in this moment cuz like I was like what's going on? Like both of them were holding back in my opinion. Yeah. It was like something isn't adding up. And since then I haven't put the pieces together, but Cameron on Twitter posted about like some bullshit with like like an outfit and music and stuff. And like people are like, what is she going on about? Like, what is she talking about? And like notably, a couple of queens this season have commented and then had their tweets removed and have like followed up with a separate tweet that basically shows a zipper and lips closed like. So there's some been some conspiracy going on mm-hmm. on the interwebs that they got shut down on NDA purposes, like that they were saying things that they shouldn't say. Mm. And so I'm wondering if Cameron's tweet, like that I'm referencing, is about the closest thing she could do without actually spilling tea. Like I really get the impression that the way people were commenting, they're interpreting Cam- like Cameron's post as she hated the song. And was not happy mm. about like this being the song that she was coming back to assassin with. Like, mm. what the fuck is this bullshit? And I was like, well, th- it's the guest judge who is right in front of you. <laughs> so, baby, you yeah. like obviously need to be if a little respectful. Do... Yeah. <laughs> but even I was like, this is not an exciting song. Yeah. It wasn't it's a old, dance too. remix. But again, like, like, and I don't, again, and I don't hate to say stuff like that, but I just felt like, oh, shit. <laughs> what? I hadn't seen this. I don't know if it'll, oh, don't, don't, don't split for me. My fall play is the Delta variant. <laughs> oh. and a... Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. And that's her. Yeah. See, I think I think Cameron really is like super sour about this being the song that she got that was selected for her to, to lip sync. And I'm mm. wondering if it got switched. Mm. And the reason I say that is because usually when the assassin arrives, they already know the song. Like this is what Laganja revealed was that she knew like two or three days before arriving what the song was so that she could, she took the time to think through the choreography and what moves she wanted to do, what hits she wanted to make on certain beats. Like Mm -hmm. there was a whole methodic nature to it, which I would expect. Mm -hmm. That was not what got presented this time. So it makes me kind of wonder if perhaps the song had been switched up and that's what cameras really like been out of shape about is like this outfit and what I was going to do has nothing to do with what actually we had to work to. Mm. I don't know. Who knows? It's that, just very interesting. So that being said, here's the more awkward part. Cameron won. Yes, she did. She so did. And I feel like she barely won because Cameron didn't really yeah. do many gymnastics. She did uh, uh, a summer, not, not a summer. Yeah. A somersault. Yeah. Yeah. Like she kind of just, you know, did a full 360 handstand. That that was apparently impressive. Ooh. I didn't think it was, right? And I was like, okay, but then again, I thought they were both holding back and I feel like Raja intentionally was trying to not have her be the one that reveals the lipstick. Mm. Chicken shit. So <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm just calling it. I'm so irritated. There's five girls left. You won. One of the other four has got to go home. Get over it. It's competition. But yeah, I mean, you're going to have to reveal it anyway. So, well, right. We've already learned that if there's a tie, yeah, uh, you're going to end and, up breaking the tie, girl. So, and also, you reveal it if you when you when they talk about it, unless you 
and choose not to, which, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> like, it was going to be found out eventually. Anyways, there's no way to get yeah. around it. So, yeah, like, that's that's kind of the sort of the little bit of gag is that Cameron ends up winning and has to reveal the lipstick of which of these four are going home. I will say this. When I, when I um, got this image, Damon, my thought was, how wild is this? Because this looks like a top four. Now, mm-hmm. when I say that, we're going to forgive the outfits. Yes. Because Ginger's is the only one I still like. Like, so... Like, but I mean, like these four queens, if we, you know, had someone try to spoil it at the beginning of the season and say, these are going to be the top four, I wouldn't have been surprised. But here we yeah. are. They're, they're the four that are in the bottom. Uh, so um, lo and behold, Cameron reveals Miss Eureka is the one that was selected by the group to go home. Mm. Not surprised. So... Yeah. So I'm going to put it like this. Um, while a, a point can be quote unquote, can be made that even though she has not been in the bottom and she's been safe this whole time, she deserves to be here more than quote unquote people that have been in the bottom before. She hasn't made, she's been safe the whole time. Mm-hmm. She hasn't, done enough to to succeed to win right and she's again at least she's never done enough to get into the bottom she's just kind of coasted right and, which will only get you so far which yeah will only get you so far you can only you know keep the car in neutral while you're going downhill like <laughs> learned that this weekend um <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, uh, um, <laughs> listen to the to the COL show, y'all. If especially if you're a, a patron, yeah. Um, but it was just very. It, well, again, like while a point can be made that way, it, it's not enough, right. in my opinion. Um, everyone else in the competition, you know, Roger included, has at least got a win. Uh, um, and while it could have been possible for, say, Trinity to go home because she's been in the bottom the most, um, she's got two wins mm-hmm. as well. Right. So I'm just, I just don't feel that being a reason to send her home. Plus, she's been doing pretty good. So. Right. Yeah. Um, and. I'm double checking, but I'm pretty sure at this point, doesn't this mean, hang on, um, come on internet, you're being real damn slow with me today. (laughs) Right, so now Raja, Ginger have both had two wins, as well Mm -hmm. as Trinity. Mm Mm-hmm. So that means Kylie's the only one that hasn't had two wins. Correct. In the top four. Mm hmm. So, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, and, and to add a little bit just to, to everything, Trinity's been in the bottom three times. Kylie's only been, or Kylie's been in the bottom, and Ginger's been in the bottom twice. And Raj has only been in the bottom once. FYI, everybody. Yeah. And Trinity and Raja have both been in the high team. Uh, mm-hmm. Quote unquote, both Kylie and Raja have been high team captains. Raja has mm. been saved three times. That's a lot. Ginger's been saved three times. Kylie's been saved three times. Trinity's been saved twice. Yeah. So theoretically, I guess that out of the four of them, that makes Trinity in last. Like if you were if you were looking at it purely from that competition perspective about ranking. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it would be Trinity, then I think Kylie, then and Raja, then Ginger. Like right, bottom to top. Right, and Ginger has had the most financial winnings. Mm-hmm. Like she also just that. added another thousand dollars this episode purely because she and Kylie were the winners of the mini challenge. 
Mm -hmm. According to Rue, they each won $1,000. Now, Rue said that they got the $1,000 from the Department of Education. And when she said it that way, I was like, okay, that's not a real thing. Yeah. And I doubt that the DOE would really gave this show $1,000 for each winner. So I think they just got $1,000 for winning from World of Wonder. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Eureka is the one that has to leave, which honestly uh, pleased my heart just a little bit because I went on a whole rant last week <laughs> about this very yes, she did. issue. This, this yes, thing. she did. Um, that being said, not one hour later, but 15 minutes later, I know, David, I know, I know what's coming from you. Uh, we get this whole reveal that uh, Eureka has barely finished her confessional to camera, written her message on the mirror, is still in face and gown, had taken off the hair or the headpiece, and all of a sudden is notified that she needs to pay attention to the television screen where the pre-recording shows up. And then what cracked me up actually was Eureka had a little freak out and she was not, not without hair, mama. Like she goes out to <laughs> Toko put a wig on and then supposedly is told that she has to immediately change and get her ass out on the, on the main stage for a lip sync for her life. Mm -hmm. And that we're getting to the game within a game. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll we'll probably discuss that more here in a, a little bit, but uh, sure will. <laughs> so do you're ready to get into our last segment? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so amused now. <sighs> All right, children, so it's time for the snaps of the eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses, the highs and the lows of the episode. So, David, who are you giving snaps to? <laughs> um, so I write down um, some reality to the reality show, maybe? Okay. Question mark? Okay. okay. Um, it was very interesting seeing some of the queens kind of getting frustrated about things. We have heard over the years that, you know, this is a kind of a boot camp and this is very, you know, rigorous and stressful situation. Many queens have mentioned that they have difficulties with some of the stuff that has happened on the show, mm -hmm. mostly because of what happens. Um, we've heard that sewing machines sometimes don't work in, a, in the workroom and, and they don't replace them, yada, 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 yada. So all this stuff. So it was very interesting seeing Raja kind of have her like what I would like to call like a writer's block or mental like block mm -hmm. trying to build her character. Cause after Rue's conversation with her, uh, um, it was very interesting to see Kylie kind of have like getting frustrated with the sewing machine because it wasn't doing what it needed to get done. Right. And I understand, you know, they know they're on a deadline and they need to get this done and yada yada and everything else. So it kind of was good to kind of see those moments um, then I think in Untucked, it was mentioned, Trinity mentioned how talking to RuPaul made her feel like a little girl. Yeah, I like, I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, because sure. they, they did have that kind of conversation amongst them as competitors, like how they feel when they have to talk to Ru and mm -hmm. what that what that is like to talk to RuPaul Charles, like in those mm -hmm. moments and and yeah so you know there was definitely some some feelings about like mm -hmm. especially when you're being told that your idea isn't that good of an idea or that yeah. it should be better yeah and again we obviously don't see everything that is said right. but it's entirely possible like like i don't think i don't i know rupaul probably doesn't go mama this is garbage but like um you know, the like the conversation with her and Raja with the whole, like she couldn't say her name. I mean, Rue has always had issues and difficulties with names to begin with. But um, like the Queen see it or like whatever. See I me. can't even see me. God bless it. I don't know. Like I got it. Like I get that 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 it's it, it's hard. It was hard. 
I don't want to say it was that hard. I mean, yes, I just fucked it up, but <laughs> that's not a point. I was just thinking more along the line. I just couldn't remember. Um, but like, it's not that hard. Queen see me. It's just very. It doesn't. It doesn't slide off the tongue. Right. Like I see a queen. Like and it was, and I and I love that it's it was literally just a switch. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And a change from me to you, which mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. But again, just having those moments and seeing this like these like genuine things and like an untucked, there was a lot of conversations that um are moment oh excuse me, between um Eureka and Ginger, how Eureka looks up to Ginger because they're both big girls in the in the, you know, in the industry having to deal with all the other things that they have to deal with as large, larger plus size queens Mm -hmm. and um, seeing the inspiration like that's that's always nice to hear. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was my sort of overall like. Snaps for the episodes. Right. Mm hmm. So I'm giving snaps to Ginger's head. Um, I mean, I don't know personally what Ginger's head is like, but uh, <laughs> I imagine there's no complaints from CJ, your husband. I mean, but mm, I will I mean, say, and he's got a lot, and she's got a lot. Of things. <laughs> Shady girl. Um, my <laughs> the thing I will say about this is, um, no, I really felt that Ginger was the one who kept her head on straight. Yeah. Like she had no issues with this competition, like with this challenge. She was like bing bang boom, like just putting it yeah. together, knocking it out, was fully confident, like and I thought she executed well. And the other Agreed. girls were, you know, struggle bussing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. Agreed. Like I So it makes me nervous. Yeah. It makes me nervous. <sighs> it makes me think that she's not gonna win. It makes me think oh. like we're being misled, like, you know, she's gonna make it to top three. But she's not going to win overall for some reason or mm. whatever. And I don't know quite what that's like about. Top I've, three yet again. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh. but anyways, I thought I was giving snaps to Ginger for her. Like, I thought she had her head in the game. I thought she, like, you know, kept her nose to the grindstone, so to speak. Yeah. And she, she did exactly what she needed to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, I again, I, I had my criticisms about her, her look and everything else. But I agree with you. She came into this, like, this was this. She was fine. Yeah. Like she she's always been like quick on the trigger. Like she can give you a joke, she can make you laugh, she can always get like she she's smart and talented and I wasn't worried about Ginger in this challenge. Um at all. I knew that she was shine. The only reason there was an issue was because she didn't win, which I don't know. Like I'm I'm still conflicted about that. I don't think I don't think Raja did like worse or better than Ginger. In my opinion, I don't think she did. Right. But it, but again, I think there's the whole it kind of was more Ginger than an original character kind of thing. Maybe that's what it was. Who knows? But I felt that way about Raja as well. I don't know. That's I don't fair. know. No, that's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that being said, uh, Damon. <laughs> okay. Audience, please brace for impact. <laughs> 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 Will you give it who or what are you giving eye rolls to, Damon? Get on with it. You've dragged this shit on for nine fucking episodes. Let's get on with this shit. Like, what is this game within a game? What's gonna happen? Why are we waiting till the 10th fucking episode to get all this going? Like, I'm, I am, I have, I have grown tired of this. And then your preview for the 10th episode, like, you're essentially dealing with the other queens reaction to some random news that we don't even know they've gotten. Like, we don't know what they've gotten. We don't know what was said to them. You can't tell us that. You're not showing us anything about what's gonna happen. Like, what going on? Like, are, are nine other, like, not nine. Yeah, nine. No. Eight? What? Four? Yeah, nine other queens. 
are going to come walking in the runway and, and lip sync for their, like, what, what is this? What is it? I want to know. I'm tired of this game bullshit. Like, and you, again, like, you waiting until now to, like, snap this fucking, like, door open and you haven't even opened it all the way. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I am, I am, I have, I have had it officially. Thank you, Detox. I am over this moment. I just want to know what's going on. And if you're not going to like, because, like, again, if it's something that we should have or would have seen, like if it was going on, like off, you know, offside, then cool. Like, and you're going to give us a preview of everything. Like, if it's what I was thinking it was in my head, which is, like, the queens are kind of, like, Serena Cha-Cha and I think um, Jiggly were the first two to go. Mm -hmm. Those two lip sync for their life, and one of them succeeds, one of them leaves, and they're out of the competition. Then the, uh, the following week, uh, whoever was next that went home, I'll, whoever Yara, who I don't know, fuck it, I don't care. Yara competes against those two, whoever won that win, and then whoever wins that one goes on to compete again and again and again. So it's kind of that thing. And so while Eureka's getting called to the stage, she's not going to see all the other queens that have been eliminated. She's just going to see one queen, oh, which is the queen that has okay. made it the whole time, or you know, beat the last lip sync thing. And is there to challenge, like, she goes against Eureka, and if Eureka wins, she's back in the competition, it's still a top five, or she goes against the other queens, and, or she picks one queen to go against and has to beat them, but, like, what? Mm. What is it? I, I kind of like your theory. Like, so the idea is what you were saying is that Serena and Jiggly would, would do a lip sync. Mm -hmm. And then whoever won that would go against Silky. And then whoever won that would have so, to go yeah. against Yada. And so you just keep working up the mm -hmm. chain. And whoever wins that one then goes against Scarlet and then Akira and then Jan and then Pandora and you get to Eureka. So in theory, say Jiggly won the first lip sync mm -hmm. of, of your life. I guess is what you're trying to say. Then, mm -hmm. or I don't know, they come up with another L word. Um, then Jiggly would have competed against Silky, and if Jiggly mm -hmm. won against Silky, then Jiggly would go against Yara. Mm -hmm. And based on track record, Yara probably would have won. And then go against Yara would have gone against Scarlet, and then maybe Scarlet would have won. She would go against Akira, probably got beat by Akira. Akira would have gone against Jan, and then Jan or Akira, probably Akira would have won out and then it would be a carry against Pandora, most likely beating Pandora. And then it would be a carry against Eureka. <laughs> but that's like, okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's like seven lip syncs. I mean, technically they can make an entire episode of nothing but lip syncs. Mm -hmm. And I think the kind fandom like would what they lose did. their mind over that. Yeah. Kind of like what they did for the start of season 13. Okay. Yeah. And kind of like what they did for um, the um, when they brought all the queens back in All Stars Four. Yeah, yeah All Stars Four. When like, when like, yeah, four. Yes, four. When it was the the five that went home, and then the five that were still there. And they kind of like chose who they were going to lip sync against. And um, then you kind of got to the end and well, no one really went home except for um, the other queens that had already been eliminated. I'm wondering, what about this? What if Serena, Jiggly, Silky, Yara, Scarlet, and Akira and Jan are like big brother, like, vote style determining whether Eureka or Pandora come back. Mm. 
Maybe. Like, like, because remember, I've been kind of talking about this. Something is going on with these last couple eliminations. The original, like, half of the crew got to show off their final looks. That has not happened right now. So something, mm. something's so up. So both Eureka and Pandora didn't show off their final looks? Correct. Interesting. Yeah. So I think there's something going on, but I don't quite know what it is. And I'm just, like, conspiracy theory. Anyways. Mm. So, but that's that's my that's my thought. Like, let's like okay. let's get let's get it going. Let's get on with it. I'm kind of over it. Let, let's go. <laughs> we got three episodes to get to a, to crown a new winner, right? And, and Mama, like, we 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 need to get going with this. And the fact that this has gone on for so fucking long, right? That's my problem. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, my eye rolls, I asked this question, where are the criticisms? This episode distinctly was almost without criticisms, like a hundred percent. I was like, mm -hmm. what is going on with the judges? Mm. They were, they were so pleasant to mm. all the contestants across the board. I was like, wait a minute. Why are why are we suddenly not willing to criticize these top queens? Because there's room for criticism, children. Oh yes, there was. I was I was very confused. I was like, I don't understand Absolutely. what's happening. Like, did y'all take edibles during lunch before you came back <laughs> and you recorded this segment? And so you're all very like chill, and it's not a big deal. And you know, you were mm -hmm. just like just just happy, just in general. Like you were I'm feeling just happy good. to be here. Yeah, like I was just like, there's something so odd and off about this whole thing. And I'm not even like referencing the guest judge. I'm just saying, like, you know, there wasn't really criticisms. It was very confusing to me. Fair. I'm again, I'm a little surprised. It felt very light. And again, it was one of those things where I'll I'll just put put it out there. It felt odd that those that weren't in the top ended up in the bottom because everyone did really well and i know that the queens felt that way too and it kind of sucked that they were all the, like those that were in the bottom were ended up being in the bottom um right but i also give the feeling that they all collectively came to an agreement on how they were voting i mean yes if you look at the votes yeah yeah like there was the like so uh yeah Eureka was leaving no matter what. Like there was there was no staying. <laughs> so my feeling on it is, is like they were all like, sorry, bitch, you got to go. Like and, and I think there was a couple of factors. One was she has nothing to present in terms of wins. And two, yeah. like if you take into consideration what was the beginning of the episode and how everyone talked about all her traits, um, that doesn't help. And mm -hmm. three, she kind of did the weakest of the bunch, like, this week. Her look was not that strong. Her character was not that good. Like, I mean, it was just, uh, it was okay, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And this is not the time to be okay. Like, you're supposed to knock it out. Yeah. And she even said in confessional, like, she needed a win this week in order to save herself. Well, she didn't win. Yeah, Raja she won. Is. Still don't understand why. Um, but, so... If you have thoughts about how this episode went and you want to let us know, we'd be happy to entertain what you have to say. And there's several ways you could do that. You can go to CubsOutloud.com, our website blog, and leave a comment. You could uh, send us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You could also leave us a voicemail message. Uh, you can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Or on social media, uh, you can pretty much type in Cubs Out Loud anywhere as one word. Um, if you would like to join the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race chat, you can go to Telegram, which uh, we have a little entourage chat group over there on that platform. It's tinyurl.com forward slash Telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. Uh, if you would like to know about when the live shows are going to be uh, going uh, out on YouTube for the regular series, you can go check out our Google calendar at tinyurl.com forward slash calendar hyphen C-O-L. 
Um, if you would like to support Cubs Out Loud, there's several ways you can do it. The first way is you can get uh, some merch from Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And there's several different categories of things over there. We have things with our regular logo as well as stuff for COL Drag Race. So Damon and I happen to be wearing the Consent is My Foreplay t-shirt, which has the drag pride colors in it, which is the blue, Woo! pink, and white with a crown. Um, that's uh, smashy design inspired. We also have other items that have the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on them. So, for example, Damon happens to have a lovely coffee mug for serving hot tea that has our mm -hmm. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on it. Um, and the design style that he happens to have for that mug is what they call the two-tone. So it has a lovely colored handle and it has a matching interior to the handle itself. So um, that comes in, I think, about three or four colors. I think there's black, gray, like a blue, and a pink, if I remember correctly. Um, but there's other things as well that you can get on there. Um, you could also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud and get full access to our episodes, uh, which include the pre-show and the post-shows uh, for what gets recorded and uh, before it goes out for after or mm -hmm. sorry, before editing. Um, you could also just, you could leave us a tip. We would be happy to take your money, honey. Um, you can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud, you know, and help us pick the cabbage. Give us give us some coin. You know? Give us some coin. <laughs> um, and if you would like to, you can help us promote Cubs Out Loud at Apple Podcasts you could rate us five stars thank you very much with a lovely comment mm -hmm. uh and you can also find us pretty much on where online anywhere that you can get uh comes out loud so we do have two uh audio feeds of the podcast one is the regular series and then we also have col drag race broken out separately if you want that uh, uh you know but basically subscribe wherever mm -hmm. you uh, can find and listen to podcasts damon mm -hmm. if they were to get in touch with you where would they go if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on most um, bear-related sites. That's Theater Cub 79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B 79. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm-mm, Mama. Mm -mm. <laughs> that's not. I just that's just a warning. My, that's not down. a criticism. Yeah. <laughs> I looked down at my like feed, and I was like, oh, well, there's there's that. Uh-huh. Um, mm. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online at Gamer73. Um, and uh, when it comes to all things drag, I have a Twitter account, which is Gamer73DRAG. And I was highly <laughs> amused recently, David, because when I was in my drag Twitter profile, it kept recommending all these people I'm already friends with on my regular Twitter profile. <laughs> it was like, you should be friends with these people. And I'm like, no, I don't need that over here. This is a whole separate profile. No, it's just I from don't need drag those. stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't need like the big, like hairy daddy bear, like just in my drag race feed. I mean, I wouldn't say no, but <laughs> right, like I'm trying to prevent spoilers. That's the whole reason. Mm, yeah, but yeah, that's that. Mm. So with that, uh, we're gonna say goodbye, and we'll see you in another week for episode number ten. Bye bye. <laughs>